Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Sam Baxter. I'm a genetic counselor um, and the associate director of data sharing at the Broad Institute. Um, but my research mainly focuses on understanding genetic prevalence and how we can help uh, patient advocacy groups uh, with this information. Um, and so I will be talking about um, that application to the um, GB1 uh, spectrum of GSD4 and APBD. Um, this was a larger study that was performed for a, um, a wide group of patient advocacy groups, but I'll be talking just about uh, the applications um, for your community today. So starting out, um, what is genetic prevalence? Uh, many people probably have not heard genetic prevalence before. You've heard prevalence and maybe incidence, but genetic prevalence is slightly different. And that slight difference is actually um, uh, rather important. So genetic prevalence is the estimated proportion of a population. So what's you know, piece of a population has a causal genotype for a genetic disorder. So in the case of GBE1, what, uh, you know, what proportion of the world's population are we expecting to have um, a disease causing variant, a likely pathogenic variant, a pathogenic variant mutation, there's a lot of words for it, but basically having um, one of those on both copies of your gene. And so that can be the same variant called homozygous, or it can be two different variants, um, uh, either a, which is called compound heterozygous. So we're asking what proportion has this combination and why is this important to know? Well, one, understanding how many people are expected to have the genetic cause of a disease is an important piece of the how many of us are there puzzle that many patient advocacy and rare disease groups are facing. Rare disease is rare, as we know, and basing our estimates of how many people out there based solely off of who presents to clinic and receives a diagnosis is going to be an underestimate. I think all the speakers that we've heard from so far have covered all the reasons why we know that to be true. But comparing these two data points, how many people present to clinic, what do they present to clinic with, what do they look like within clinic, um, and how many people do we expect to be showing up to clinic based off of this mathematical approach of estimating genetic prevalence, when you bring those two together, there's a lot of powerful information that we can find from there. So how do we build this puzzle? Well, we first start with what are the disease causing variants? What are those pathogenic variants that are out there? So we scour the internet, um, primarily though, in databases called ClinVar, um, which is an open source database that anybody in the world can use and deposit variation into. Um, there's HGMD, which is another well-recognized one. Um, but one of the main sources of this information is patient advocacy groups like the APVD Research Foundation. Um, we work with these groups closely because they know the most there is out there about this disease. And so we ask for them to partner with us to find out not just the variants, but more information about it. Once we know that list of variants, then we can go to population databases. These, There's many of them out there. Um, I am, uh, just a disclosure, I am the scientific operations manager for NOMAD, but NOMAD is also one of the um, largest open source databases of um, exome and genome, genome information, which is trying to have a snapshot of what variation within the, the human population looks like. And so we can look in these population databases and say, how often do we see these disease causing variants. Not together, we're not looking for people who actually have the diagnosis, we're looking for carriers. So people who are out there, we expect no symptoms. Um, and we ask how often we're seeing those carriers in the population. Once we know how many people are carriers, we can then use um, something called the Hardy-Weinberg equation. It's basically a mathematical alg algorithm that's quite simple math um, to say how many people do we expect have the um, have a genetic diagnosis. And so when we did this for GBE1, it's a lot of math, a lot of numbers. The reason I put so many is because everybody wants to see it slightly differently. So for everybody here, pick your favorite way of looking at it, and I'll try to go through it, ask questions after. But if you look up here in this chart, um, I don't know if I have the ability to show you what I'm seeing, but um, and the, the chart up at the top where it says all populations, we expect there to be a carrier frequency of about 1 in 280 um, and a, a genetic prevalence of about 1 in 323,000 individuals. Now, um, we did also break this down by GSD-4 and APBD. Um, that's, we were working with the APBD group. Um, we wanted to see if we could isolate, um, you 
you know, which variants are associated with di which diseases um, and give these numbers. But we actually weren't able to easily isolate the different diseases for all, again, all the reasons that you've heard. And so that's why we think really just going with this all GBE1 is the most informative. Um, I'll just quickly wrap up with, I give fractions quite a bit. Humans don't love fractions unless you're a statistician. Um, they always ask me, how many individuals is this? So great, you gave me a fraction. How many people is that? And so um, it is limited. Nomad is not representative of the entire world. There are caveats to this, but you can take the prevalence fraction and times it by the world's population and give you an estimated number of individuals in the world. And so that's what we did here. And there's an estimate of 26, potentially 26,000 people. Now, I do just want to also point out that with genetic prevalence, this includes everything from when that sperm and the egg first meet and until the end of life. And so this could include things like miscarriage or um, people who may not present for some reason. So um, we just need to remember that these numbers are all inclusive. Um, one last thing I will plug is that this data is all available publicly because the APBD group um, agreed to share this publicly and you can scan this QR code right here to um, go and see which variants were included in the math. Um, sorry, I went over a little bit, but thank you very much.